youtube.com slash Tim Westwood TV. Yo, Tim Westwood TV, I'm here with a good friend, Jammer, what up, family? Good yes, to have you here. Life. Now, Jammer, I was just reflecting, you have had a long career, a long journey in this game. How long, like, how many years deep? <laughs> you, it's, wait, you're talking really in this thing, you're looking at 17, 18 years. 18 years yeah, plus. Yeah. Crazy. So if we were to look at those 18 years, what were you like your day one period of time, your, your early days? Um, just being in the ends and just trying mm. to make a name as a DJ, mm. do you know what I'm saying? And just even before my records, like just stating that you, I'm someone out here. Like when I come through, you recognize I'm here. Like, so that was my first part of my stage of my career. And then, so that was as a DJ or yeah, as opposed as a, to an MC, a DJ? As a DJ, yeah. I didn't even produce or I didn't spit at that time or anything. And what music were you playing? I was playing um, Bashment, um, Jungle, Garage. Um, I mean, it was definitely the era of Jungle, but crazy. Yeah, yeah, just, just, just on the, the, the yeah, actually the, Jungle, so it was Raga. Yes. Then Jungle came yes. in, yes, and then after obviously Jungle Garage came in, and they were all okay. massive scenes in the UK, mm -hmm. like massive. Mm -hmm. And what was your DJ name? Jammer P. Jammer P. Yeah. DJ Jammer P. Yeah. Okay. You know, everyone used to have a letter on the end of their name. Yeah, for right? real. For so, real. What was the P for? Power. Like my second name is Power. Like Jamet Power. So I just put. Everyone used to call me Jam. And did you have MCs with you in the team? Um, at that time, no. I was just playing music mm. i was just a guy that would go to like the house party in the ends or either christening anything i'm bringing my records and mm. i'm pulling up and I'm, and I'm doing the best set and i used to get like that's what i used to get my energy from so um and you'd be I, walking on the mic and mixing. yeah they, i was still mixing and then i met d double mm. like from before like nasa crew before 187 crew and um we used to just mix back to back he he was djing as well but he used to spit on jungle so then so when we'd be in the house raves and that he would ask me to dj for him and that's how like me and him's thing kind of built up, mm. and that was that was early early stages before man had produced us. And then on w and uh, on that circuit, I mean, there were, used to be a massive jungle raves in the old days, places yeah. like Astoria, World Temple. Express, Temple, crazy crazy era of time. Mm -hmm. Were you on those type of bills, or were you more just in like? I, I was in the rave. I was raving yeah. in my my machino ragos. You get what I'm saying? Raving. But obviously, certain times, like as I used to go to the bigger raves, obviously we couldn't really get. It was the scene was solidified, mm. didn't it? You know who was on, didn't it? But we, I would just go there and absorb everything, mm. and then and then learn and just take that back and go to like smaller. Like then we started putting on our own raves. That's when like we went to. Um, I just printed out some A A4 papers. You get what we put? Hired a little venue, the gym there at ends, and we started putting on raves, and. Um, yeah, and that was kind of the start of us like, having our own little scene, mm. like D DJing and like knowing each other in the ends. You had like more fire was in the ends as well, um, DJ Twister. So all them man that we used to all go to school, Snicky Slim Ting, mm. East Connection. Um, so we was just all in that area. And then, then Diesel, D Power and all them, but then they started doing the Young Man Standing, Deja Vu came in. Exactly. Now Young Man Standing and uh, like, th they were bigger raves, they were Stratford Rex era. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. were serious raves. Yeah. They were big, big events. They were the birth of like mm. grime, like as a, as a genre. Like it was like if you look back at some of the footage and what was actually going on in those raves, it was it was like untu untouched, mm. just straight raw. Like the people that are going there and the people that are performing there. Oh, straight raw. Like yeah, straight raw. So a lot of realness. And then also, I mean, that was at the era of garage, but what. At the like end what of, they were doing was yeah. grind. At the end of the sets, you would get like a sidewinder or something, because mm. Wadi was already doing garage, mm. so he was already like known in that. And then they would have like a little set at the end where they would let like MCs come and spit. Yeah. And that's like look, I was a Nostra Pete. Um, people like that rest in peace you know what I'm saying they saw the vision from early mm. and we started putting people on and even that, that I wasn't spitting I was still DJing I was still like semi getting into producing mm. but more DJing I was like if you look at all those sidewind tape packs it's me as a DJ and that's kind of where I made my first like, yeah I mean Sidewinder when they were over in um, Milton Keynes yeah that place yeah. Is, uh, Swindon Sa uh, Saxon Road so, yeah. whatever they were in Swindon, Brunel mm -hmm. Rooms. That was a crazy era. 
and obviously, as you say, Temple was doing it real big. Stratford Rex was really the home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And EQ, EQ. EQ was the other sport yeah, as well, yeah, yeah, for yeah, a minute, yeah, man. Yeah. And then you had on the radio, you'd, you'd even have people like unsung heroes like Commando B doing mm -hmm. stuff that, like on that late night. Late Joseph. night, um, drive, um, drive to, what was it, Jim knows. Um, he used to have that. Late night show. Late night show where he would play like dubs and war, exactly. war time and that. Yeah, yeah and he'd play like the dogs vs. Wiley and stuff. Yeah. And so, and then the podium was going as well, mm -hmm. uh, down in Vauxhall. Yeah, yeah. Now, when did you switch into uh, like the MCing role and get into going? Well, that, like, mainly like when we was doing all those raids and it started to get serious, everybody said like, yo, like we need, we need you to be as the producer. Do you know what I'm saying? And, um, that's when I started producing a lot. I was I still wasn't smitten, so all of the nasty crew records and a lot of other artists around that time that was doing stuff, a lot of the music come from the basement. It was always recorded or produced by me in the basement, do you know what I'm saying? Um, so you were blessed in those early days to have like an early studio that, you know, and that was the basement of your folks' mm -hmm, this place. Yeah, yeah. What was it like, like having that basement, like, and your folks upstairs, was it always calm or was it stressful? Or? Uh, because, you know, a lot of people used to come through there, used to be a little crazy all the time. Yeah, yeah. Or it could get crazy. Yeah, do you know what? 90% of the time, it was blessed. Because it was like safe haven for the man, and they could get off the road, you get me, come make music, eat food, smoke a little weed, chill, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? No drama. But it's only when some, sometimes you get like people come with their bad energies and try to bring that into the situation. But um, yeah, 90% of the time, it's been good. People have had respect because they understand what the, what the, what the situation is and how like you at that you don't you can't just people don't just let people in their houses not many houses where you can go and just man from all man from the ends any areas whatever Birmingham different you're just in the yard do you get what I'm saying yeah. and were your folks cool with that yeah yeah because they knew they saw the vision in it they knew what I was trying to do and what we were trying to do not just I do you know what I'm saying because um, if they didn't see the vision a lot of stuff wouldn't be here yeah exactly you know what i'm saying and then the other thing with that it's not like now where everyone's got a studio in their crib you've got a computer you've got a studio in those days like a studio was unattainable for a lot of people on the street mm -hmm. like far too much money mm -hmm. far too high end yeah and like y you know you had access to that access to that and there yeah. wasn't really much of that go there wasn't that going on in the hood no because you couldn't get a studio at time no. so if you're you couldn't afford it you couldn't afford it yeah 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 they were all yeah. like couldn't afford it couldn't get it looking unless you had the label unless you mm. were signed you know what i'm saying so for the studio for everyone basically anyone who couldn't get to a label couldn't get a deal that was their place where they could come and, and make everyone them. was chasing the deal that, yeah. that was the era of demo tapes mm. everyone just waiting, waiting. On, not doing something but waiting, waiting on for someone yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so all that was going and on a frustrating era for artists very frustrating very very frustrating and that's why i think the basement works so mm. well because people could come there make music all the djs used to come there from all the mm. stations like knowing they'll come before their radio show mm. so if people have been making tunes they'll be like jam who's coming this week off radio give them my tunes so the djs will come i'll load them up with all the tunes they'll go straight to radio so it was like the whole scene it's was just, just yeah, it's, 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 yeah. yeah just fed on itself. did you ever mess with pirate radio were you ever on pirate radio as yeah, a DJ? yeah yeah i was on um mystic i was on um flavor i was on deja vu i was on rinse fm I even we done manic. I done we, to be honest. I done radio tour like yeah. pirate tours like because yeah, cool. after we realised how much it was getting big from the London stations, we started to go further out and go to yeah. like Luton or um, Hatfield and places like that and start doing sets up there. Do you know what I mean? To push it more and just keep it. Keep what significant records came out of the basement? Um, Birds in the Sky, D W E, Take You Out. Um, Go on and go on and skeptic to record that in there. Um, saw it coming, me, Wiley, ears. Destruction, Merkel Man. The list goes on. Yeah. It's, it's so, progressing down the career, obviously, Merkel Man was a changing game for you. That was in the era of Channel U. So, you know, videos could get shown. Mm -hmm. And like you, you just totally flip, flipped it in that era, man. Yeah. I mean, that Miracle Man was like a classic moment in the history of grime. 
I, I, I feel like when it was at the time, like you know a lot that like it was people from London. They didn't know how to understand their identity at the time, and just and as well, they was taking themselves too serious. So it's like a lot of people was like hiring like when rappers didn't have no money, like hiring Bentleys mm. and like spitting their bars in front of it or like everyone just on some angry thing. So I thought, nah, I need to bring some like humour and light to the situation. And that's when I came up with the Merkel Man concept and done the video. And it, 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 you could see the difference in my career at that time because it went from man them and couple chicks to like kids and adults. Mm. The Yardies in the barber shop, yo, Merkel Man, like every, yeah. like, so I knew what, what the character, and then people started to call me Merkel Man. So people would see me and say, oh, Merkel Man. That, but, it, but that's not my name. Like, but it just took its own self and made it, do you know what I mean? It wasn't me. Like, it was just so powerful. Everything that was happening with it at the time, you just had to let it mm -hmm. happen. You know, even down to a certain stage where I, did, I had performed that tune so much that I didn't want to perform it no more. And then it was like, if I didn't perform it, people weren't having it. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's one of those tunes. Every artist got that tune. Do you know what I mean? But with that tune, it felt like at one stage you wanted to like kind of deny it at one yeah, stage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. it was kind of like, like you know, when you have a monster record, it defines you, and you you, you add more talk. Exactly, because everybody wanted another Merkel man, it? and mm. it's like. I come to the realisation, you can't have another one of that. That is what it is, let it live, mm. and just let it be, exist as it is, and it's going to do what it's going to do for time. Because if you look at sets now, there's not many people that have a tune from then that can perform it and get that reaction today. Mm. There's not many, only power, like power, there's one, can't really ma mention much mm. others. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So the, the P's and Q's. The, the P's and Q's. And Q's. Yeah. But I'm saying even within, I mean like as a hype tune, mm. like a hype tune, like you've seen it when we when you first oh, started. Shut it down, baby. It was it was it was like, man, that was like mosh pit levels. Like oh, if we was in this day and age pit. now, and that tune dropped now, mm. that and that we was on a festival run with that. Mad. 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 And what was so powerful about that era is channel you were showing videos and this is all pre-internet so you know the videos didn't exist much before the likes of channel you and that was just ringing off and everybody watched channel you that was yeah. like the one urban station everybody watched it man it, it um the one thing channel you done because we at the time obviously before that was only dvds mm. so oh, yeah like, the dvd yeah. scene though so yeah the, but people were eating off that yeah but we was doing loads of the decks mm. and loads of the mics and we was putting together sh hood videos because mm. it was um, hot air promotion right in capital which shot the first power. Mm. So we was in the we was in the hood before channel you got and we were just going making hood videos and then putting them in the interviews on the DVDs. So but there wasn't we couldn't get them onto MTV or anything, so we just used to put them on the DVDs yeah. and then channel you came in. So it then opened up a whole like world of things that had been created and also could be created, you know mm. what I'm saying? So it just helped the scene flourish much more because it gave us like it gave everybody like a face. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was hard, harder to know what people looked like. There was no, like, Instagram mm. or, like, Facebook, and you're not seeing, like, what man... You just know man's voice through the speaker. So I think Channel U and the DVDs changed yeah, that heavily. Yeah, you can't underestimate the power of DVDs of that era. They were, like... People were eating off them. The, 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 the hustle game was incredible. Um, I know I fed families that I didn't weren't even eating off me. Like the bootleg in the markets on them was so Mad. heavy. Like we couldn't even stop it. It was just at the stage. You know what? We had to let it happen. And I remember one day I was sitting there. It's like I, rem I, I thought, oh my god, it doesn't even matter because even though they're bootleg, they're making our team bigger. Mm. Just let it run. Everyone's got to eat. So we we just got to try and monetize and do as much as we can with our batch that we're selling and anyone else who's eating let them go and eat do you get what i'm saying and what we started to do is we, tr we we started to go and meet the people in the markets and say look we'll give you the stock at whatever the price that you're paying it for, for. you know what i'm saying and then we'll just do it and that, that was way. it and that was the era of like when market stores was a place you'd go to yeah and like yeah. there would be a man with a the stall there hustling it the barber shops would be selling it the clothes shops would be selling yeah. it. there was like yeah. urban outfits yeah. they'd be selling it and then like the chinese man or woman would be coming around like knocking on your door with a whole collection of proper movies as well as all the street <laughs> <Is it>, yeah. <coughs> mad era man mad yeah. era like it was it was like a lot of like some people don't know that even exists like what we're talking about do you know what i mean it's like but when li like being there to see that i think that's why you know the knowledge of like people like yourself and i like we've seen so much in our time that to see this now i think we understand like the depth of it because to 
even gigs, like his whole thing, he started his thing because he couldn't get the, on certain deep mix mm. mixtapes and that, do you know mm. what I'm saying? So he started his own mixtape team, do you get what I'm saying? And it just created a whole thing. And that was the day when, the days when you really had to go out there and go to other ends and really do work. Yeah. Like it wasn't a tweet and it's going to every, like you had to go to the ends. So this is my new thing. You have to go everywhere and let man know that you're about and you're doing this thing. And man have to, and man have to respect you as well because it was a lot to do with respect those times. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, nothing wrong with like, Artists like now it's different, isn't it? But I'm just saying back then it was built up of a lot of other things, you know, mm. other other things that came with with being a big crew or a big rapper. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and respect was like everything had to be defended. Yeah, everything, <laughs> even unnecessary things, had to be defended. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, hundred percent. And white level, uh, white labels were running in the record stores. Yeah, well. that was a white, massive thing. White labels, man, that changed a lot of lot of lives, innit? Like, Wiley, he introduced a, a few of us to this guy named Terry, and he was in Stratford, his pressing plant. And and that was kind of just, imagine so many youths are in the ends with tunes on their mini discs and whatever, what's not, yeah? Mm. But they can't press them. Because pressing is another mad thing now, you have to have a deal to, like, in, in man's yeah. heads, that's yeah. what, everyone used to think that you had to have a deal to do any of this stuff. Yeah. They didn't think you could Germany register your company. Yeah, the, all, <laughs> the madness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so these times, Wiley was like, no, I know this Don and Terry, so we've gone down there, that was it. That was it, it was like we had license to, 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 to pr print money. For real? Yeah. Because it was pr like... Press 200, flip that, come back, come press back 500. Straight. Come back. And that time, man was, man's with. stuff was selling so hard mm. that man weren't taking no SOR, sell or returns. Man was mm. straight cash. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So and that was real paper in those days. Yeah. It's not like now where music is free, man. No, if no, you no. You in, get yeah. paid for your work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, those days it was like it's crazy. That vinyl went, and the thing. Obviously, the internet slowly reclined all of those outlets, and yeah, the record shop started to de de mm. decline and disappear. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Even like a lot of big CD shops and like music shops have gone. Yeah, they're gone. So you were in one of the early crews. Nasty crew, mm. like a legend in the game. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of powerful MCs in that. <laughs> Very powerful. Like, even if you look at everybody's like career from that crew now, mm. they're still here strong individually. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, and so, yeah. what was the full lineup? Of Nasty crew. <laughs> it's, it's Sharky, Storming, Double, Armor, Hyper, Monkey, Footsy. Myself, Mac 10, Marcus, and if I've missed anyone, I say Footsie, mm -hmm. right? yeah, yeah, and 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 Terra Danger, you could and say, Kano, yeah. K and Kano, mm -hmm. and Kano, yeah, and Kano. Yeah, there's a lot of names to remember, but yeah, Kano as yeah. well. And did, to be honest, like a lot of the time, like Dizzy was like just with man as well. Like he used to come and do a lot of nasty sets. Like he was very heavily like around us as well, but he wasn't just, he never ever just announced he was officially mm. announced the crew then. And, and Marcus really held it down, held the crew down. Yeah, yeah, Marcus yeah. done his thing, you know, some people had disagreements with him and that when he came out um, at jail, because obviously when he was away, like, the crew was kind of, not left, I had the studio in it, you know what I mean? And you had to make the record, like, mm. so it made sense that we just run the, the the situation from here. We was just, we was, you know what I mean? We was making big records. Kano was blowing up. We just unloaded the mics. Everything was happening. So he he came out, um, and yeah, he just had, you know, everyone was young, and he just it it was just it was just a lot of arguments. You know what I'm saying? So um, ev like everyone kept it moving. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? But um, obviously, everyone's grown wiser now. Marcus is, you know, said. You know, publicly on you know the on screen, they apologised and you know everyone can move on now. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah, I mean it was definitely a real time at that time. But like yeah, everyone kind of went solo off the back of that. Yeah, so yeah, you was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was so you was now a lone soldier. Mm -hmm. so, and when did you? That's that's when mm. I started spitting. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Because I was in the street. Obviously, imagine going from like 15 men every day in your basement to spit on your beats mm. to like. Everybody. You get a look in yourself. Yeah, yeah. So everybody's like, the crew's a bit thing, everybody's in different places. Obviously, 
Man, like, still checked for me individually, but we wasn't linking up every yeah. day, do you know what I'm saying? So Not moving as a unit. Yeah, not moving as a Everyone unit. Everyone had their own crews at that stage. Yeah, exactly, started to break off and have their own little brethren's and circles, so... Um, yeah, then I was in the studio and I was like, I had a lot of time on my hands making beats, I had loads of beats. So I just, like, my brethren, for my end's name, DM, he was a rapper at the time. So I had, bear, I had extra time, so it was like, he went, me and him went to school. He was the first person that really, like, I'd done music with. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? And then um, he just, they were going through some stuff. He just lost his mum and his dad. Do you get what I'm saying? He was like, I just need to record this album. So I said, all right, cool. I'm going to record this album for you. Recorded this whole album with him, boom, boom, boom. Through the album now, he's like, no, nah, man, you need to spit. Do you get what I'm saying? He's like, I'm not finishing the album unless you do a verse. Do you get what I'm saying? So I've done a verse on his, but that was a hip-hop thing. Do you get me? I've done a, I've done a verse on it whatever and then we've done the album it's done now and then after he's finished the album he's like no you you should like get me you should spit fam like you got bare beats that, that you should spit so i just started like doing my little thing and i came up with like i had bare lyrics before that like but then like little lyrics and that but then merkel man came up and then wiley heard it and then he came to the basement and he was like listen you need to spray this bar on this beat you get me sprayed it, giving it to Maximum. Maximum was with him on the day. So that was roll deep times. So that man took it to the radio. So that was it, fam. From from me played that tune. It was mad. But that's how the spitting thing started for me. And remember Ears was to make the world. We had Neckle Camp, but Ears was like the big MC. He was the one that was about to blow. Like and then um then Merkel Man hit and it was just a bit mad because we was putting one of his singles out and then Merkel Man just yeah, it, it just all got mad down. yeah just shut everything, everything down. down. So it was like yeah. it was a bit weird for us as a our relationship was it mm. was a bit mad because exactly. we've been working towards his album everything and then, and then obviously god down. just put that yeah, there like yeah, that do you know what yeah. i'm saying but the whole thing was we should have just rid that wave together and you just come and ride the yeah, wave get, and, and, and make it yeah. yeah yeah but obviously we was always still younger them mm. times like man didn't really think certain things through but that wave was um that wave came so that was Neckel, that was, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Ne ne Neckel crew, was it? Yeah, Neckel yeah, camp. Yeah, 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 yeah. So who else was in that? The uh, Gully Ranger, me, Ears, and another youth that I'm not even going to So that mention. came after Nasty, that came straight, that was your, that was your team there. Yeah, that was my yeah, team, yeah, yeah so yeah, was, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, 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 so as, as that thing off, yeah. obviously I had to make, because I was so used to mm. my, the group. Yeah. Like, it's the vibe, innit, do you get what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, cool. I got the young dons around me. Let me make a little crew. I know exactly how to put the music together and package it, market it. Even some people say today that's like one of the greatest grime albums. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It's it's not. It wasn't on a label at them times, but, no. but it's. Check that album, like straight neckle and neckle camp album, like the way it's put together and everything. So. We had, we was doing that and that's actually and started that popping. Big, that was the big slang word then as well. Yeah, Neckle, Neckle, Yeah, Neckle, Neckle, there was all, it was all on TV, Red yeah, Nose Day was yeah, screaming, it was yeah, popping, you get me? Yeah. And that was early when Reggie Yates first mm. went on TV, do you get what I'm saying? But these were all groundbreaking things when it was happening. You couldn't say slang mm. on mad words like this. Mm. It, like, we was just like, yo, this is actual things breaking through, do you get what I'm saying? And that's what the character done, like, with, with Malcolm Man. It just, it just took me to different places. You know what I'm saying? It took me different mm. doors that most of you wouldn't have got in with just like some angry get me 16 bar rally tune. You know what I'm yeah, saying? for real, man. For real. And then when did the BBK come along? How did that? Because it took me a long time to really adjust that you were in BBK. I used to always think you were hanging with them as opposed to yeah. fully fledged. Well, you know what happened, yeah? And that's the thing. It was like, we was always family. Because remember when Merkel Man was going on, me and, me and Skep started spitting together, innit? Me and Skep clashed each other. So we had a clash, innit? Um, and that's how, before we met, we had a clash, innit? And then when I said something in the tune, innit, about, like, Jamie, innit? And he was like, nah, I don't like that. He was like, let me, I need to meet you, innit? So we met up, innit? But obviously we thought it was going to be a beef thing, innit? But we ended up being, like, virgins, innit? Like, cos... There was just something, man, that man knew, like, we need, we need to be... We need to know each other, like, this is this bigger than this, 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 this clashing thing. So, me and Skep was spitting heavy at that time. So, leading through all that Merkel man thing, he was there, so was Jamie. So, we was going and doing shows together, and... After Dizzy heard... Um, Merkel man, then he's called me up, he's like, yo, you need to come on the mouse in English, whatever. So, I've, so I've, but these times no one would, Dizzy weren't about 
Yeah. Didn't see him. No, he was yeah. elusive. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's very much distant. Even when he phoned me, I was yeah. like, nah, this is a, this is a prank. It's a prank. It's a prank. I locked off the call. He phoned me back. I told him to spit a bar. He spat a bar. I was like, I, 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 I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. And I was, I was chatting to him. And he was like, Yeah, I need you on Maths in English, man. This Merkel man thing's mad. The video is a classic, fam. This is, a, this is amazing. Like, so I was like, I say nothing. Went down to the studio. I started working with them on some stuff, and then that just developed into, All right, cool. We're going, we're going on tour. We got this show. Do you know what I mean? And I started just, me and him just became close and was just doing stuff like for about two years. Um, but they, then they was meant to put my album out, innit? Like, <clears throat> but it was all a family thing, innit? Man wasn't signed to no one mm. or nothing. Man, just, that man had the situation. They just had five number ones. Just when he left the label, I remember he just done dance with me and everything was going mad. So uh, after like doing a two year run with him, he was so massive as well. Yeah. Anywhere we've gone, in a different way, yeah, in a different, yeah way. in a different way. But yeah. it just like, I'm, I'm trying to do my album yeah. as well. Do you yeah. get what I'm saying? So it's like everywhere we're going, you're so big. You're my brethren, I love you, but you're so big that I need to not be next to you for a minute. No, because you're in the shadow. Yeah, yeah, do you get what I'm saying? So, uh, we and him had a conversation, I was like, listen, I just want to put my album out now, like I need to do that. He was like, listen, obviously man's not trying to slow your thing down, innit? Mm. Do what you're doing, no love lost, innit? So then I, 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 I left, I done my, not even left, but I just... Free agent. Yeah, free agent. Made my album, but I dropped with Big Dada, and then... Yeah, I was just in Skepture one day and he was like, yeah, man, like, you just need to come home, innit? And then that, and then that was it, basically. We just, that just happened as well. That was it since then. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's been a, like, yeah. a lot, a lot of happened. Yeah, a lot. What do you think you've learnt most over the years, man? Because on the real, I remember you used to always be drinking and crazy and cussing and ready to fight. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, you were crazy. I didn't even used to like you in the DJ booth, man. You'd be like, yo, get this dude out, please. <laughs> you know what I mean? You was definitely like, like, like a live, like a raw edge, yeah, man. You yeah. definitely had a raw edge, man. You was definitely out there. I think like... I mean, that was some old school style. That was the old school style. Yeah, fun, do you know, man. like... It was like that. It was, we come from an era it was just everything was so mad when it was happening. When I look back at my, like, not my, even my, when I look back at that me, I think, how did you even manoeuvre through with all of this and get to here? Mm. Like, got, like being such a nutter. But I think there's a beautiful side that to that crazy. Word for it, baby. Yeah, he was definitely the nutter. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> like, fucking this guy's crazy. But it, but it worked for me because mm. people always knew, like, when I'm doing my performances, they know I'm really like that. Like, they believe my performance. Mm. Like, I'm really out here doing this thing. When mm. I'm on the stage and I'm, and I'm doing that and I'm getting the jack up. Exactly. It's the real one. You feel it. It's like yeah. tennis. And it, it wasn't a pull up. It was a jack up. It's a ja days, yeah, yeah, it's a jack up straight. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So my, like, I know I've had to learn and contain all my energies and put mm. them into certain places for different situations. Do you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes when you're it's one way or you're a certain way, sometimes people can misunderstand you for being one thing mm. or a certain thing. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? But those were the days coming up, man. Remember, we was artists that came in the game. Next thing you know, everyone's throwing limitless bottles of rider. What's a rider? Mm. What? Oh, what? You don't just give us drinks. Mm. What? Yeah. So imagine like just that, and you got social group. Everyone's gas. And those days, remember, you'd have bridge. Man will be around you and say they're bridge, but they're just they're just there to ride the wave of what's going on. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? So there was a lot of that going on in that day. Like, mm. like if you look at people's social groups now from back in the video, it's not going to be the same people. It's they all big stars. They've narrowed it down to maybe two or three. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like you, key yeah, key key members, yeah, 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 yeah. People got walls. And, but them times it was 30 well, man. I mean, oh yeah, without a doubt, it'd be nothing to turn up a rave like 10 cars deep. Nothing. Like exactly. A lot of hangers on, yeah. a lot of extras, a lot of unnecessaries. Exactly. And then also, if you was like the, you know, the, the cool and calm jammer of today, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't have got heard. You couldn't have cut through. No. You, you had to make that sort of crazy noise. Yeah, I wouldn't have survived. Yeah, wouldn't yeah. have survived. I wouldn't have survived. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, I think that's all also part of the legacy, and it? it's like one of them things. Like they're gonna say, yeah, there's some legendary footage of me doing a mad thing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? There's a couple already, anyway. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? But. I think that just comes with my character, and if you listen to my music, I think it portrays me mm. on both sides. Do you know what I'm saying? But you just, like you said, I've got, like now you see me, you know it's there. Mm. If I want to, if I want to be wild, I can be wild, but I'm mm. it's contained. You know what I'm saying?
I mean, Are You Dumb was, was it cl classic in the game in the sense that that was just a, a great tagline, let alone a name for a CD. Yeah. But Are You Dumb, like, that great, just, you know, you shout that out in a dance. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. as a saying, it just meant so much. Like, so, came out with volume one. Well, it was just Are You Dumb. And was it, was it what was that one? Was that the one with the road? What was the one running across a road or something? Yeah, yeah, that was volume, yeah. volume four was yeah, the one. Yeah, the road, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like every time it looked like Free. you were going to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every yeah. time you, <laughs> you did a video. I've already done that. I yeah. really went on the um, M1. And what M was it, running M across the M1? Yeah, I was doing my shoelace up in the middle of the M1. Yeah, man. Because them times they're like... That was Jammer, man. Yeah, that was what you'd expect from you. Yeah, man was really like... In the way okay. man used to look at music, or still do look at music, but man really do this thing. Like when man are making art, Man are really doing it. It's not photoshopped. Mm. Man really went there. Man could have lost their life. But like, the people that, even my brothers that was there, just one the other day said to me, said, fam, that day two lorries went on each side of me. I was in the middle. You know what I'm saying? Man. But we got the great, the great artwork. That's what I'm saying. You're yeah. mentioning it now. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for real. But now I would tell, are you down volume five? Which is your favourite out of the series, man? Um, to be real, Volume 5 is my favourite because it shows, for me, as progression. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And it shows how much I've cleaned up everything and how I've, you know, grown as an artist and just as, like, someone who puts music together, mm. full stop, and projects together. So I'm happy with it as a project and, like, I know it's, it, it's touching. It's doing its thing already, do you know what I'm saying? It's doing not more than I expected, but I don't... I try to not have too high nowhere, expectations. Yeah. You just dropped it over, like, it shocked everyone. <laughs> no one saw that coming. No one saw, in this day and age, you can see things coming. coming. yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, was yeah. just here. It's yeah. here now. It's here now. And yeah. I, I feel like that's the way that now to... That's the way that if you're a real artist mm. now in this day and age, if you're re if you're really putting out music and it's hard and you know it's the thing, you don't need to let no one know. You just need to drop that. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's gonna mm. do what it's gonna do. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not, on my Beyonce shit. Do you know what I'm saying? Do it, baby. <laughs> She'll drop an album with videos and <laughs> no one knows. Trust me. Yeah. Yo, thanks for watching Jammer breaking it down about his history. And don't forget to hit subscribe to keep up to date with all the hot Westwood videos. Here's some more videos for you to check. There's Jammer's freestyle at the crib session. Crazy. Just click here. Or Jammer talking some more on his fashion swag. You know, get some tips, baby.